How's it going everyone? I'm Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another Let's Play to Learn video. In this video we're playing Airscape, a featured game for Construct 2 and I'm really excited about this game because it's one of the featured games on Construct 2. I mean it's really something special and I can see why. Uh, I'm not really used to playing vector games and or making vector games but I can see that this has a whole lot going for it and because it's so polished it's just so, it's such a pleasure to play, and it's even more comforting to know that it's made with Construct 2. That being said, I'm not partial to any engine. I know my main engine and my engine of choice is Construct 2, and I think it's one of the better sketching tools out there to get your ideas out and just get going. So I hope that this game and I hope that this video just acts as more of an inspiration to you as to what you can achieve with Construct 2, but not as something that should limit you. You should use whatever you're comfortable with, whether it's a native language or Game Maker or Unity or Unreal or any other thing out there. Uh, use what you know and make the game fun, because even though this was made with Construct Two. This is all about its mechanics. It's all about its gravity and how it actually handles as a puzzle platformer. And I think this could this could be made with anything. But the fact that this was made with Construct Two impresses me so much. And it even impressed Ashley, the creator of Construct Two, when it first came out, because you just didn't know that you know some of these things could have been done with the software. And it's really cool to see how far they've been pushing this. So. I think everything we've seen here, we've actually gone over. We've done the whole foreground thing. All these are doing are falling objects with blurs on them in the foreground. Uh, we've gone over uh, the tile maps in the last video. We've gone over slopes and how the tile map should probably be uh, above and you should be using a collision tile map. We talked about that in the live stream. So you use a collision tile map underneath and then you have your player mask so everything's a rectangular uh, collision box. And then right here when you actually have a slope you can just kind of hide it and clip so you don't actually have to uh, program in for your angle. But it looks like that they actually kind of do have a little bit of an angle programmed in because I can see that I'm tilting a little bit. So it's kind of going above and beyond. The thing that we haven't talked about here is this, and I'm still trying to decipher how they did this, if it's with the sign behavior or the physics behavior. When I overlap a tree, they kind of shake, and I think that I've seen this in a lot of games recently, and it's a really cool thing to add in. So that's something new that we can add in a future video. Uh, I know I haven't been doing as many of the Let's Play to Learn tutorial videos as much. I've been trying to just collect all this information from all the games we've been playing, and also I've just been busy doing all the Mega Course stuff and uh, the boot camp. So I've been doing what I can with these videos, but uh, this should be really inspiring to you. It's inspiring to me, even though I don't do vector artwork. It's just cool to see what you can do with Construct 2, and it's even cooler to think that now I can go and actually implement this based on what I think they used or what behaviors they might have used. So the one thing that I noticed here that I've messed around with but we haven't done on the channel is when I overlap this checkpoint, bam, we have a very cool shockwave uh, lens effect. If you add the lens effect to one of your objects, it'll do this and then you just kind of have to execute either a for loop or something else and you can get this really cool effect. So one thing that I've noticed about this game is that it's hard. It's not an easy game by any means. And that's just something that goes with level design and, and making a good level. And for me, this game is more of a game I'd be playing for fun and not for you guys as much because I'm not good at this game. I tried playing this a little bit and I realized that this is a hard game for me to play. So I'm gonna do the best that I can here and we're just gonna talk about a few more things. Other than that, I really think that you should play this game for yourself if you're interested in Construct 2 and you wanna see what it can do. And just in general, it's just a really good game, so you should check it out, it's on Steam. Um, one of the things here I'm holding down, I clearly did not hold it down long enough, I need to hold down the right trigger to jump so I pick up speed a little bit more. And I have to collect these fish for my, my bonus here, and do my little variable jump height so I don't actually go as far. I really like uh, the squishiness of the character, and I wonder if they're just using some math to divide the width a little bit there because you can see that it's just, it looks like an extra alive, bouncy character uh, that they get away with because it's a full drawn vector image. It's, it looks really cool. I mean, uh, it's not a vector image, obviously, but it's, it could have been, I guess. It could have been uh, done in Illustrator for all I know. But um, one of the things that I also like about this is the 
options menu. I'll show you the map in a second, but the options menu and this, which is definitely achievable already. I've already programmed in a system like this before, uh, but just to reassure you that you can do this with anything, including Construct 2, you can make an options menu like this where you have settings and controls and everything else that you would see in other games. Don't feel like Construct 2 can't do it because it can. You can change your save slot. You can have multiple save slots. Uh, one of the things that I thought was funny, well, I turned off the screen rotation because otherwise we would all be throwing up at this point, uh, is the screen shake. I noticed that the screen shake percent bar was at 100 and it looks like it can go higher and it can. And as a cool Easter egg, if you put it all the way up to 200 you get the Vlambeer logo which I thought was a hilarious Easter egg uh, since they're known for being the kings of screen shake that was just really cool for me and I laughed pretty hard when I first saw that uh, it was an actual lol moment so the thing that I want to talk about here because if I play any more of this game I'm just gonna die and make a fool out of myself is the gravity system it's just so interesting how they've actually programmed in three different types of gravity, I think. I mean, you have this, and let's see if we can get to the next level with the map here. You have your regular land gravity, where you can see I'm obviously wearing my oxygen tank because I'm a fish out of water. Uh, here is our map that we can kind of go around in. It's just another thing that you you may not have thought could be done with Concert 2, it can be. And now that I look at this, I know exactly how I would want to do this. Um, but the three things of gravity, so we have our land here, and then when I jump down here, there's some water, and then the, I have this water-based gravity, which is pretty cool. So the basic of what I've gotten from what I've played is you're trying to collect these bonuses, which are your fish, friends, let me see if I can get out of water here. You're trying to collect your fish. You're trying to do it in a, I think you can turn on a timer to see how fast you can do it in. And then you're trying to get to the end of the level without dying. I'm not sure if it counts how many times you die, but it should because I've died a whole bunch of times. Uh, the other fish is down here. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice is the music and the audio. The audio object is something that we haven't gone over as much. I've been saving it for the boot camp. Uh, not in a bad way, just there's so much to the audio object. You can hear that when we're underwater like this, it's kind of, it's playing a different track. It must be a different track or it's doing something else. And there's a whole lot of features that you can play at objects. You can set listeners for certain objects. There's a whole lot more than just hitting play and hitting stop. So that's pretty cool. Let me get out of here. So the gravity in this, changing controls every single time I'm on a different uh, level. I'm on, I'm on land and my controls are like this. I'm in the water, my controls are different. Uh, this level in particular right here is as far as I've gotten uh, when I was playing in my other save. But let's see if I can not die. This right here. So now I'm back in water and all I did was jump into water and now I have different controls. And in between from land and water we have air we have gravity it's just to me it's so cool that they programmed in this gravitational pull that is just so complex i i mean it could be a lot easier because of construct 2's event system but what a complex concept uh and i think it's just really cool um that's this could have been programmed in anything but because it was made in construct 2 uh i'm just i'm very proud of this game and it's not even my game so uh okay i can't even make this jump see yeah, I'm just going to die, aren't I? Um, that seemingly happens to me, but this is one of those games, if I struggle at that, I would like to play on my own time and have more fun with. But there are just certain things about this game that you should be checking out for yourself for any Construct 2 game, or any game with any engine that you're currently using, you should play, and you should find out what they're doing. Game Maker has Hyperlight Drifter. Find out how they made those things, because it's obviously possible. We have this game, and we have uh, The Next Penelope, which are great games. We have Coin Op Story, which is coming out. They're all on the front page. Go to your game engine or languages featured page and look for games and get inspired by that, because Every single engine can make something great. It's, it comes down to the gameplay. But when you see games like this, it just gives you more hope or it gives you more extra motivation to go out and actually make these games uh, because now you see what is possible. And this is on Steam. I mean, it, what a great game. I'm very happy with this game, but I don't want to play anymore because uh, I think I'll die a whole lot and therefore I won't have much to talk about other than getting frustrated about dying. So I want to have fun with this game. I want to have fun with it being a rage game and let me go play it. 
uh, and do that. But I really do hope that you've learned a little bit from this tutorial, that you feel inspired by this uh, tutorial, <laughs> from this Let's Play to Learn. I hope that you feel inspired by this Let's Play to Learn to go out and go find games made with your game maker uh, or engine or language or whatever it is. Go find it, go play it, go be inspired by it, and then just make the game. I mean, this these game mechanics are nuts. So go make your game. Thank you so much for watching this Let's Play to Learn video. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander. If you like this video, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment below. Make sure you join our Facebook group and subscribe for daily videos. And I'll see you guys next time.